guys, what's happening? Thanks for coming back. I'm on episode 10, 10 of this Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial series. It's been a lot of fun. I've had a great time. Uh, the funny thing is I started out, if you look at like the first video, I think I think I said in the video, uh, I think I'm gonna do three, um, maybe, you know, four or whatever, and then I did like five, and then I did seven, and you can't stop at seven unless you're writing Harry Potter. So uh, I went to 10, because it's a nice round number. It just seems to fit. And it feels like I covered a lot of ground, right? Getting you kind of from, hey, what's Aurora and how do you use it and what's new and different all the way into more advanced techniques. And so I think we've covered a lot. I hope it's been helpful. I've had a lot of fun. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. I'm going to uh, keep creating videos. The series may be ending with this video, but my videos aren't. I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to do more uh, tips and tricks and some uh, more tutorial related stuff and some workflow videos and some other things I want to share with you as well. So. I've got plenty more to come, so uh, keep checking it out and coming back. Today, we're gonna talk about um, replacing a sky in Aurora, and it's something I've been doing for a long time. I did a video a couple of years ago about doing it like an Aurora HDR Pro, which was the version before 17, and I've done a video uh, about how to do it in Luminar, and the truth is it's not really very different, um, but I got a different little tip or trick or something I'm trying in this one. <laughs> I hope it works. Um, no, it does work. Um, but I hope it, hope it works for you on your images. And so uh, why don't we go ahead and get started right now. Okay, so I've got this photo. This is a three exposure HDR. I, I say that every time because that's what I'm doing in Aurora. And um, uh, you know, here's the deal. I, it was boring. The sky was not really that exciting. I love cloudy days because the light's not messing with my stuff and creating, you know, ugly shadows or whatever. Um, but uh, it wasn't like, you know, beautiful. It was just, okay, I'm in a place that's kind of famous. This is a, a barn in uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It's famous. Everybody shoots it. I've seen gorgeous sun, sunset photos from here. I showed up to shoot sunset and there was no sunset, as you can see. So, I'm going to make a sunset. Um, and, and that's really what, to me, um, that's part of the fun of Aurora and Luminar, you know, is the fact that you have layers, you can add new stuff, whether it's a texture like I did on, you know, a couple of videos back or a new sky like I'm doing here. It's just fun to go create something because I, I think of this as art, not, you know, I'm not a photojournalist, right? I, I think I've said that before and I'm, yeah, it's probably pretty clear <laughs> from seeing my work, but, you know, I'm entering the realm of art when I'm doing things like this. And, you know, as long as you're not trying to pass it off as being real, I think that's f totally cool, right? I would say, hey, this is a composite photo, meaning I took some other bit and stuck it in there. The bit I'm sticking in is this Sunset Sky number eight uh, texture, if you will, of mine. This is just a Sunset Sky that I've shot. And by the way, if you didn't see this, I'm in the Layers panel. You click on Plus, Add New Image Layer, grab your file, and it gets stuck on top. Now the first thing I normally do is I'll just reduce the opacity just because I want to see through. Uh, that's the only reason, right? I'm gonna bring the opacity back up. You don't have to bring it all the way back up. If you like the sky opacity kind of like that, you know, or maybe somewhere in here, just leave it, right? You don't have to go back to 100. That's up to you. Um, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the transform tool and I'm gonna grab the Y offset and I think I gotta look at my notes. Yeah, I go to 44, and basically all I'm doing is I'm just scooting that stuff up. Uh, how about there? I'm just scooting it up the frame because I like these clouds over here, and I just want to, I want the uh, the clouds to be in the frame where they are now that I've moved it. If I, if I uh, leave it like that, then I got the clouds here. I don't really like that. So that's the only reason I use transform. You don't have to do that at all. It's just a personal choice on this particular photo that I want to use transform, scoot it up and get the clouds positioned where they are. You hit apply. Okay. So there's my new texture. Obviously I've got this flat line, which is the bottom of the sky texture photo. And uh, that don't look no good at all. Right? So here's what I'm going to do. Usually on a sky replace, and this is the tip or trick that I was talking about. And I haven't shared this before. Usually on a sky replacement, what I would do next is grab the brush. Um, and instead of doing, let's say I did not do the transform and move the sky up, usually what I'd do is either grab the brush and just start painting it in, or I would come over here and grab the gradient mask and just drop a gradient and blend it that way. But this time I'm gonna do something different. 
Um, instead of doing that, I'm gonna actually use a luminosity mask. So this is kind of fun. Come over here, as long as you're on the proper layer, right? So make sure you're on the layer with the sky. Click on the little gear icon and then mask and then create luminosity mask. And then just give that a second. And boom, there's your luminosity mask. It's basically a more subtle implementation of that texture on top of your photo. I think it looks really nice. Um, obviously you can still see a line. We're gonna go change that. But before we go any further, I wanna point out, I understand that luminosity masks in Aurora 18 are not the same. It's not the zone system that we had in Aurora 17. And uh, I know some people have not been happy about that. I totally get it. Um, I don't work for MacFun. I don't control what they do with the product. I understand that they are working on something that will either be better than um, the old version with the zone system or uh, some version of or flavor like that. Um, so in other words, I think they're going to have either basically the same thing or something better, but apparently they don't have it yet. So at the time of me recording this, we're, you know, we're currently just using the base luminosity masking feature, which auto creates it not on the zone system. So um, sorry if you don't like the luminosity masking, can't help it right now. Yeah, the way I look at it is you use the tools that are there, right? So um, I'm using this tool and that's what I'm talking about. So now I'm gonna go grab the brush and I don't wanna paint it in because I've already applied it with the luminosity mask. So I'm gonna grab the eraser and I'm gonna maybe change the opacity and, oops, not that much. You know, maybe 50, I wanna drop with my left bracket. I'm gonna shrink the size of this. And basically I'm just gonna go over some of this where, uh, where this line is uh, because I don't want that. In fact, I need to raise the opacity to do that and just make it easier. Um, so I'm just coming through here. You can see that line's kind of disappearing. Now some of the cloud cover remains over the mountains and um, I'm not removing all of that. And the reason why is because uh, the clouds actually did show up over the mountains. So let me show you the before. Here's before I added the sky image. You can see this layer is turned off. These clouds are covering the mountaintops. And so one of the things about replacing a sky, there's not a like an edge aware brush in MacFun products yet. I hope someday there is. I have no idea if there's gonna be, but it would be great if they did. But as I said, use what's on the truck. Um, use the tools that are on the truck, right? So the truck that we're driving right now uh, doesn't have that tool. So the fact um, is that when you have a complicated horizon, it becomes harder to mask in a new sky. If you got sun or, or sky behind trees, it's gonna be really hard to get looking really good. It's easier with a flattish horizon. This horizon is not flat at all. This is the Grand Teton Mountains. They're very jagged. Um, but because I have cloud cover covering a big chunk of them, I used it because um, it's kind of a complicated horizon, but yet um, I'm sort of getting the benefit of having the cloud cover in front of it, so I don't feel like I need to completely erase the texture and make it perfectly curve the horizon line. I hope that makes sense. Um, and, and there we go. Now, now, if I wanted to come in here and make some changes, I could come in here and, and do some further erasing, but I don't. Um, so I'm pretty fine with that. I think it looks good. Now I might raise the opacity a little bit just to bring up a little bit more of that. And I, I think it looks pretty good. It's not perfect. Um, and that I can't, can't get this thing to hide. There we go. Um, sorry, little things like that drive me nuts if I can't get my mouse to work. I gotta stop what I'm doing and, and fix it. Um, the, um, uh, it's, it's not gonna be perfect, but in demo purposes, like I'm moving a little quicker than I would when I was doing, uh, if I was doing this on my own. So um, FYI. Now here's where um, I think the photo needs work. To me, it's, it doesn't totally go together. I want the light levels and the balance to generally kind of flow between the, the bottom of the frame, which is the original, and the top, which is obviously the new one. And so this is where I always add a, at least one, maybe two layers on top of a sky replacement. And basically to me, these are extra coats of paint to make sure you're not losing, um, that it's not obvious that you got two different things, right? You're kind of varnishing, for lack of a better word, um, the, the combined layer so that they start to blend together better. That, that's how I like to think of it. So that's an adjustment layer. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a little contrast, and I apologize, but I gotta look at my notes because I don't remember everything I did. I'm gonna add a little HDR enhance, and then I'm gonna go into top and bottom tuning. And what did I do? I'm dropping the exposure a little bit in the sky, and you notice that brings back some of the color. There's the before, 
There's the after, just a little bit of that. And I'm gonna bump up the contrast there as well, which will also help with the color a little bit. I think that looks a little bit better. Uh, and then I'm gonna drop the exposure in the bottom just a little bit because it's a little too bright for my taste. And I think that's it. Um, so let me show you what that layer did. So there's the base uh, photo on the bottom with the new sky on the top, right? And then here it is after a little bit of uh, adjustment or fine tuning, which was just a couple things in the basic panel and the top and bottom tuning. And you, you could theoretically say you're done. I'm not done, but that's because I like to have two coats of paint, as I said. Um, so I'm gonna go add another coat. And in this case, it's another adjustment layer. And this time I'm just gonna use a preset. Um, I like to use presets when I do these because it's, to me, um, a preset obviously is not designed for the top half or the bottom half of a photo necessarily, uh, but it's generally designed to apply a look to the entire photo. And so to me, that's like an even way of distributing edits across the whole photo. You could go do the same thing just by grabbing filters and applying them. I totally get that. I just happen to like to use presets, so that's why I do that. So I'm gonna get this realistic vivid and I'm gonna apply that. Now, it comes in, it's a little too heavy handed. So I'm gonna drop the opacity of this layer to let's say 50%. Again, I'm looking at my notes. So, you know, I like the colors. They, they pop a little bit more now and I think they look better. So I think that's good. Um, and then I'm gonna go into top and bottom tuning one more time and I'm actually gonna bump the exposure up in the bottom. I dropped it earlier and now I kinda wanna brighten it a little bit. And I'm gonna to go to HSL and I wanna drop the saturation of that green. It's just, it's way too kind of neon for me. And I wanna drop the luminance of the green as well. I just think that looks a little bit better. Um, the other thing I might do is maybe drop the saturation of the yellow. And if you, if you haven't done this before, if you have a lot of grass and you're dropping the saturation of the green and it doesn't have the desired effect, try the yellow because that green always has yellow in it. And every time I change um, want to change green, I end up changing the yellow a little bit and it works. So I guess the colors, I, I don't know, I'm not a master of colors, but you know, they just tend to go together pretty well. So um, there we go. Let me show you what HSL did to the photo. There's the before and there's the after. I think it looks more natural. It's a bit more muted. I just think that looks generally better. You could maybe come in here and warm up the bottom a little bit just because there's some nice color in the sky. I don't think you have to. And then I think that's about it. I think the only other thing I would do is adjustment layer, add some denoise because I picked up some noise in the sky. And, and I'm just a fan of kind of smooth skies. There it is looking a little dreamy, which is kind of my favorite way to create a look. So I'm gonna just uh, make the mouse big, get 100% opacity and just go paint this kind of noiseless, dreamy looking sky on top of, um, uh, or paint this, you know, noiseless uh, look into the sky. So let me see here. There. Oh, wait, am I reversed? Oh, I'm in a race. See, look at that. Throw that out. All right. Um, let's just, uh, let's say done now. What do we get here? See, you got to pay attention. Okay. I need to go to paint. That's what I need to do. I need to paint the soft stuff. I got all backwards. Happens all the time. So even though I'm sitting here making tutorial videos about this stuff, I screw up all the time. Believe me. So there we go. Now the mask is uh, missed a corner in the top there. Okay, so there we go, say done, and, and there we go. I mean, I think we've got a decently blended photo. You, you might argue uh, about some of the cloud overlap here. If you recall, uh, the clouds from the previous, uh, from the original exposure actually overlap these mountains. That's why I'm not messing with it. And that's one of the reasons I use this photo, even with the jagged horizon. I think it works. I don't think people would give you a hard time about saying that looks fake. Um, but again, I, I'm about disclosure, so I would want to say if I shared this photo, I'd say this is a composite. I added the sky. Um, but regardless of all that, that's a finished photo. And so uh, let me show you the before and after, right? So the before was a pretty colorless, um, colorless scene at sunset. That's the middle exposure from the bracket set. And you can see we made quite a few changes. Uh, a lot of tone and detail with the HDR Enhance that came up in the foreground, soft sky, new colors, and a lot of blending that happened. So the bottom line is here's what we did. Added a new sky, used Transform to position it, applied it with a luminosity mask. That's uh, something new that maybe you haven't tried yet. It, it does work pretty well. It's fairly subtle, which I like. And um, 
and then we made some adjustments, a couple of layers, which were the layer zero and the layer one. The layer zero is where I did some contrast, top and bottom tuning, and then layer one is where I added the preset. Those to me are just the two coats of paint to blend the scene together and make it look like it belongs together because the initial base blended image of the new sky and the original bottom, they were just kind of different in terms of the light levels and stuff. So that's how I do it. That's a, you know, you could call it an advanced technique. It's not hard. It's, uh, it just takes a little patience, particularly around any masking you're doing over, over a horizon. But it's a lot of fun. It's a creative outlet. It's part of the power of Aurora. That's why I like the product so much. And that's really it, my friends. That's the end of lesson number 10, Diaz. Is that right? Yeah, Diaz. Um, and uh, I hope it helps. So if you enjoyed this video, click like if you would. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are about, especially the luminosity masking technique. I think that's kind of fun. And um, don't forget to subscribe, share this with your friends, and keep coming back. i got plenty more planned. But that's a wrap for the series. Thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in my next video, my friends. Take care. Thanks for watching. Adios.